الفاتحة إلى حفظة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسي السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوله حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وإن تبدوا ما في أنفسكم أو تخفوه يحاسبكم به الله فيغفر لمن يشاء ويعذب من يشاء والله على كل شيء قدير آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله فقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إشرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين آمين لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم ربنا اغفر لنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا اغفر لنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا اغفر لنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد اللهم صل عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد اللهم صل عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد اللهم صل عليه وسلم أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا بمحمد النبي 
رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا نبي محمد النبي رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا نبي محمد النبي بسم الله والحمد لله والخير والشر مشيئة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والخير والشر مشيئة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والخير والشر مشيئة الله آمنا بالله واليوم الآخر تبنا إلى الله باطنا وظاهر آمنا بالله واليوم الآخر تبنا إلى الله باطنا وظاهر آمنا بالله واليوم الآخر تبنا إلى الله باطنا وظاهر يا ربنا وعف عنا ومح الذي كان منا يا ربنا وعف عنا ومح الذي كان منا يا ربنا وعف عنا ومح الذي كان منا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام متنا على دين الإسلام 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 يا قوي يا مدين اكفي الشر الظالمين يا قوي يا مدين اكفي الشر الظالمين يا قوي يا مدين اكفي الشر الظالمين أصلح الله أمور المسلمين سرف الله شر المؤذين أصلح أصلح الله أمور المسلمين سرف الله شر المؤذين أصلح الله أمور المسلمين سرف الله شر المؤذين يا علي يا كبير يا عليم يا قدير يا سميع يا بصير يا لطيف يا خبير يا علي يا كبير يا علي يا قدير يا سميع يا بصير يا لطيف يا خبير يا علي يا كبير يا عليم يا قدير يا سميع يا بصير يا لطيف يا خبير يا فارج الهم يا كاشف الغم يا من لعبده يغفر ويرحم يا فارج الهم يا كاشف الغم يا من لعبده يغفر ويرحم يا فارج الهم يا كاشف الغم يا من لعبده يغفر ويرحم أستغفر الله رب البرايا أستغفر الله من الخطايا 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشرف وكرم مجد وعظم 
ورضي الله تعالى عن أهل بيت المطهرين وأصحابه المهترين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يرد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يرد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يرد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر وسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس الفاتحة إلى روح سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا رسول الله محمد عبد الله وآله وأصحابه وأزواجه وزريته وأهل بيته وإلى روح سيدنا المهاجر الله أحمد بن عيسى أصوله وفروعهم أن الله يعند رجل بالجنة ويكثر من ثباتهم ويضعف حسناتهم ويحفظنا بجاههم وينفعنا بهم ويعيد علينا بركاتهم وأسرارهم وأنوارهم وعنوم ونفحات في الدين ودين الآخر الفاتحة الفاتحة لروح سيدنا الأستاذ العظم فقيه مقدم محمد بن علي بعلوي وأصوله وفروعهم جميع جميع سادتنا آل أبي علوي وأصوله وفروعهم أن الله يعند جد بجنة ويكثر بثوبتهم ويضعف حسناتهم ويحزن بجاههم وينفعون بهم ويعيد علينا بركاتهم وأسرارهم وأنوارهم وعلوم ونفاتهم في الدين ودون آخر الفاتحة الفاتحة إلى أرواح سيدنا صوفيا أينما كانوا وحلت أرواحه من مشارق الأرض ومغاربها أن الله يعند رجل من الجنة ويكثر من ثباتهم ويضعف حسناتهم ويحفظنا بجاههم وينفعنا بهم ويعيد علينا بركاتهم وأسرارهم وأنوارهم وعلومهم ونفحاتهم في الدنيا والدنيا والآخرة الفاتحة إلى روح سيدنا صاحب راضي بكتب الإشهار وغوص العبر والبلاد الحبي عبد الله بن علي بن محمد الحداد وأصوله وفروعهم أن الله يعند جميع الجنة ويكثم ثباتهم ويضعف حسناتهم ويحفظنا بجاههم وينفعنا بهم ويعيد علينا بركاتهم وأسرارهم وأنوارهم وعنومهم ونفحاتهم في الدين والدنيا والآخرة الفاتحة إلى أرواح كافة عباد الله الصالحين ووالدينا ومشايخنا في الدين وذب الحكم علينا وأموات هذه أمواتها أهل هذه البلدة من أهل لا إله إلا الله أجمعين وإلى أرواح أموات المسلمين وأحياهم إلى يوم الدين أن الله يغفر لكم ويرحمهم ويفرج كروب المسلمين ويرحمهم ويشفي مرضاهم ويجمع شملهم على الهدى ويؤلف ذات بينهم ويولي عليهم خيارهم ويشرف عنهم شرارهم ويكفينا وإياهم شرفة والمحن والمؤذن والمؤذن من قريب أو بعيد ويرخي أسعارهم ويغزر أمطارهم ويعطي كل سائل منا ومنكم سؤله على ما يرضي الله ورسوله ويفتح علينا وفتوح العارف ويخدم لنا وبالحسن ومراد عنا في خير ورد وعافية وإلى حضة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم الفاتحة اللهم صل وسلم
اللهم إنا نسلك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم إنا نسلك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم إنا نسلك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار يا عالم السر منا لا تهدك الستر عنا وعافنا وعف عنا وكلنا حيث كنا يا عالم السر منا لا تهدك الستر عنا وعافنا وعف عنا وكلنا حيث كنا يا عالم السر منا لا تهدك الستر عنا وعافنا وعف عنا وكلنا حيث كنا جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم خيرا جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم خيرا جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وأهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم خيرا جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وأهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم أفضل ما جاز نبيا عن أمته يا الله بها يا الله بها يا الله بحسن الخاتمة يا الله بها يا الله بها يا الله بحسن الخاتمة يا الله بها يا الله بها يا الله بحسن الخاتمة والقبول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على كل أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ونور قلوبنا وقرة وقرة أعيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نوات تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكر والنفع والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة حتى على تمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدا ودلالة على الخير افتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن سك العمل دني والمشرب الصافي الهني يا وهب يا غني اللهم إن سك العمل دني والمشرب الصافي الهني يا وهب يا غني اللهم إن سك العمل دني والمشرب الصافي الهني يا وهب يا غني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. We are continuing with our book from the book Zakhir al-Musharrafa by the great scholar al-Imam al-Habib Umar bin Muhammad bin Salim bin Hafiz. Wa nafa'ana Allahu bihi wa bi'ulami fi dhari la anqal. I am from the book The Glorious Treasure by the great scholar uh, of our time. Habib Umar bin Muhammad bin Salim bin Hafiz. May Allah uh, benefit us by him and by his knowledge to where he has said. I mean, okay. We are we are now at where uh, about the decree. I mean, inshallah, today we will finish. Actually, we finish the decree, did we? Oh, we somewhat finish the decree, yeah. <laughs> okay, All right. I will just read. I will just read through, right? And then uh, I I will go back a bit to revise, right? Because it's always important to uh, have revision, right? And then we will go into the last part of Ihsan, right? And I will just uh, do a bit of commentary on the fourth. Uh, on the fourth rukun, which is the knowledge of the hour, and on the fourth commentary. Right. <coughs> so he says, "Wabil qadar yakhiri wa sharhi min Allah Taala. Al ihsanu an ta'abud Allah ka anka tarahu, fa illam takun tarahu, fa innahu yarak." And stop there. Alhamdulillah. All right. So the last part we spoke about uh, last week was about the decree. That the good and the bad of it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. And uh, this is basically a reality that Rasulullah also taught the Sahaba. Right? There is a very uh, famous hadith. In fact, we were just there in our Imam Nawawi 40 hadith class, uh, hadith number 19. 
Uh, is where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam explains Sayyidina Ibn Abbas. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas is his nephew. Uh, he explains Sayyidina Ibn Abbas about the reality of uh, the decree. And the hadith goes, you can actually uh, tune in. It was yesterday, okay, this hadith has been there for a few weeks. Right? So, so because it's a long hadith, right, and the wisdom, the pearls that Rasulullah gives Sayyidina Ibn Abbas as a young man, uh, subhanallah, like we we're still we're still there. <laughs> we're still on the first line, second line like, of the hadith because this to to do this kind of hadith, subhanallah, like Rasulullah he is given uh al kalim, right, meaning that he is given very concise speech. Right? Concise meaning right, that he can say something in a few words and in it there there will be oceans of meanings uh, from these few words. So if his few words have oceans of meaning, right, what more if he gives the entire passage? <laughs> right? So if he gives like a, like a, 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 a lot of words, right, then you know, the, the commentary on, this, on, on all of his words right, will take a very long time before you can even scratch the surface of what it actually means. Right? And there's so much right, to gain from the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly right, from his words in the hadith. Right? So this hadith, just uh, to, to briefly uh, speak about it, uh, this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, he narrates. Uh, and he says that I was once behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and behind meaning on a uh, pillar. Uh, they were on the same animal. Uh, so they were, they were riding on the same animal. He was behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, when he said to me, Oh, young boy. And we know Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, he, the, 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 the oldest he reached in age, in the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 13 years old. And, and most 13 years old because he was born during the boycott. And the boycott happened about 13 years before the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so uh, 10 years in Medina and then the boycott was for, for 3 years. So the, we say, Allah alam when he was, was exactly born uh, in the boycott. Uh, but we know what maximum he was uh, in, in the lifetime of, of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 13 years old. So probably at this point whereby he received this advice from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was below 13 years. Right? Also you must understand the context eh? as to how Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is teaching him about the decree. And that's why for us, and don't be afraid to, when you, when you, when you teach our children, right? or when we go through the decree, just to go through and to understand this from the way the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught it. Uh, he, he taught the, the decree. He, he taught uh, many Sahaba. You know, each of them, they were given you know, uh, uh, different lines right, of, uh, you know, of, of, of different, different points from Rasulullah SAW or different ways or different parables. Is word, uh, different parables from Rasulullah SAW to understand this decree. Right. So, it, uh, so the, the, the hadith is a long hadith right, whereby he begins by saying, Oh young boy, God over Allah and Allah will God over you. I got over Allah and you find him in front of you. If you ask, ask of Allah. If you seek protection, then seek protection from Allah. And this is the first part of the hadith, right, whereby he, he, he teaches Ibn Abbas, right, so he's his cousin, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, to focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is teaching aqidah to the child. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Right, so then he goes and he says that, no, that if the entire ummah came together, to benefit you by with something, right, they will not be able to benefit you unless Allah has written it for you. Right, so he lays down what is the qadar. Right, how do we understand the decree? And he says, no, right, that if, the, if all of them came together to harm you by something, they will not be able to harm you unless Allah has written it for you. Right, the pens have been lifted, the pages have dried. This is he's really teaching a young boy what is a decree. And Sayyidina Ibn Abbas taking this, right, he understood that Rasulullah is teaching him that at the end of the day, Allah, Allah, Allah is Al-Qadir. Right? He is the one who is powerful. Right? He is, he is, he is <coughs> Al-Murid. He is the one who wants. And we know that the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Iradah. Uh, irada meaning the one who wills, the one who wants. Like Al-Murid, right? that is the, the correct terming. Uh, terminology for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-murid. Uh, he is the one uh, who, uh, who apportions things for people. So this is all under our, our iman or our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting in the decree. Right? None of this contradicts uh, that, uh, that what, what people might misunderstand to say that there is no point uh, in me even trying 
uh, if there is, you know, if a decree has been set, right, that kind of speech is from the shaitan. Right? The shaitan comes in and he gives that kind of speech to make people not even try in the first place. Because at, at, at the same time, you know, the ulama say that, you know, why do people say these kind of things as if they know their decree? You don't even know your decree. Right? And what if your decree is to be someone really, you know, uh, uh, great? Well, how, how will you know? And what if there's a decree? Right? So, subhanAllah, so Rasulullah so, so said, because you, don't, you can't see into the ghaib. Right? You can't see into the future, the unseen. You can't see. All you see is now. And for you to act on now. Right? Basically, that's, that's all the, the, the commentary on the decree. Right? So, it, uh, we must believe in it. Right? And we believe in it the way Rasulullah so, 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 has taught us to believe in it. Right? But you don't let your mind go so deep into the matter right? because that is the door of shaitan. Right? He will come and he will make you feel like there is no point, there is no use. Right? You are like that. Right? He, he makes you go that way and then you go into this defeatist mentality. Right? Or, you go, or people might go into a despair, right? a form of despair, right? whereby they just, you know, uh, they just give up lah, uh, with, uh, on themselves. And that is, in fact, in Islam, there is a form of uh, sin. It's a major sin to actually give up. Because when you give up, you give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why despair itself, to despair uh, in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is one of the major sins. Right? To go fall into uh, despair. But to always understand, to try. Just try. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only asks us to try. Right? There is His, there is his, there is his uh, commandment on us to try. And we know that uh, whatever we do, it will, never, it will never come up to mark. And we know that. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. And I had one friend, you know, mashallah, uh, she, was, she was going down into depression because of this. Right? Saying that, you know, her nafs is too strong. And saying that, you know, she's not able to do this uh, well. Saying uh, all kinds of things right? that, that brings a, makes a person paralyzed. Uh, in a sense, because you have all these things coming into, into your, your head uh, about how lousy you are as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> now, and then she, she, was, she was talking about it and I said to her, and she was really going down in a spiral. And I was saying to her, do you think any one of us has the matter solid, you know, uh, firm in our hands? Do you think anybody has it? Or anyone thinks that they have it? Uh, no one thinks they have it. Uh, but you just carry on in stride. Just do, just do what you can. Right? Every time you fall down, get up. Fall down, get up. Right? Be positive about it. Right? Don't, you know, don't go into this entire uh, spiral right, of, of feeling hopeless about the situation. Have the husnuzan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is more merciful than any form of mercy you can even imagine. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we, on ourselves, to keep trying. It's as easy as that. Right? So if anyone has all these whispers coming to them, Right, or you know of anyone who has these whispers coming to them, you point them. Right, you point them to this, uh, to action. Right. So the next part that he goes into here is about ihsan. Okay, we're going into Ihsan, and he says, why is Ihsan? This is from the Hadith Jibril that we took from the first part, from the first lesson in this, uh, in this series. When, when Jibril asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell me about Ihsan, and Rasulullah sallam said that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him, and if you don't see him, then know that he sees you. Right, and this is our two rukun of Ihsan. Right, there is two rukuns in Ihsan. For Islam, five rukun. For, for, Islam, for Iman, six rukun. Uh, six arkan and then for ihsan two. Right, there are two rukuns for ihsan. So this words and up till today the, the ulama they, they hold on to these two words. Right? And the, but the commentary on these two words, on these two rukuns from Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam right, is uh, you, subhanallah right, because it seems to be vague. Right? Like what? Like because you know for, for Islam it was clear. Uh, Islam was clear there are five things that you must do physically. For Iman it is clear. There are six things that you must believe in, uh, uh, and they are numbered. For Ihsan, it seems unclear. It seems. Right? It's, not, it's, not, it's unclear. It seems unclear. Right? It, sees, it says that, that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Him. That is the first rukun. Right? And the second rukun, and if you don't see Him, then know that He sees you. Right? Two rukuns. 
So the, the two rukuns they, say they come in, in the rukun of, of Ihsan is if you can do this, I then do it. If you can't do it, then understand this. Do you understand? And so the two rukuns is, is one is, is, is a level that not everybody is at. And in fact, most are not at. Right? But it is a level to aspire towards. You get it? Right? And the other one is an understanding of reality right, that is always the case. But even then, people uh, struggle to keep it in their hearts as they go about their, their, uh, their duties in life. So I think I wrote it down. Eh? <laughs> Easy for you to. <laughs> okay, everyone's like staring at me, <laughs> trying to explain. Mashallah. Mashallah. Let's see, I'm very wired up. Komaku. No maku eh. I didn't bring my markers. I actually have my, uh, my markers in the office. Okay. Let's go here. Oh, mashallah. Mashallah. Ni teacher eh, Rick Alu. Alright. So, speaking about Ihsan. Ihsan, they would translate it to mean excellence, right? Because it's from the word Hasan, Hasan. Right? So Ihsan is a superlative right, of the word uh, excellence. Like it, uh, it is, it is. Uh, sorry, no, it's not a superlative. It is a masdar right, of the word uh, of 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 to to do what is good right, to other people. So Ihsan has two pillars, right? Unlike the previous parts in this in the Hadith Jibril, whereby you have Islam, the five pillars. Right? And everybody must do them. Right? And of course, uh, all of the five pillars, you are to do them, except for, and all of them are compulsory, except for, and in fact, all of them, you are to do them because unless you are unable to do them, right? all of them, actually, now I'm thinking about it, all of them. Right? The, the shahada, everybody must do. The prayer, everybody must do, no matter what. Right? Unless you are, you don't have a, a, a sound mind. That means you are not mukallaf. Uh, those who are not mukallaf, and the entire thing is not on them. Right, uh, fasting, everybody must do unless you're unable to. Right, so those who are sick, right, they're unable to fast. Then there are ways around it. They still have to do something about it. Right, you have to pay your fidya and whatsoever. Right, uh, zakat, everybody must do unless you are the fakir, uh, the one who is the fakir that he can't even survive that one day of Eid that he does not pay the zakat uh, uh, fitrah. Right, he doesn't pay that one. The one is. So even then, there is still, you know, so I, was, I, was, I, was, I kept changing my words, <laughs> because there, is a, there are people who still, if they can't do it, they don't do it, right? And then you have uh, Hajj, and Hajj, of course, those who can't afford or have no physical ability for it, they don't do it. Okay. Iman, all six compulsory. Right? Everybody must have all six uh, of the pillars of Iman. Ihsan, right, the hadith goes, that you worship Allah. And this word worship, we will uh, review it. Uh, it was anta'abuda. Right? So it's from the word ibadah. Right? Worship is a very... We need to expand the meaning of worship. And right? what we understand about worship. Worship Allah as if you see him. Right? As if you see him. So this is, like you would say, uh, the goal. Right? The goal of your worship. Right? That you get so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you worship him, you are with him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. On this side, you worship Allah. Or if you don't see him, Right, this is the current state. Because with a goal, you must have a current state. Lah. Because you're aiming towards a goal. 
Right? So you're, you're, you're somewhere right now, right? and you're aiming towards a goal. If you don't see him, then know that he sees you. This is reality. Right? This is truth. Okay? So this, whether or not people realize this, realize this, this is true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you wherever you are. Right? This, you will say, one word to sum this up, will be taqwa. Right? One word to sum it up would be taqwa. This one, one word to sum it up, right, would be muraqaba. And I will explain all these terms, okay? Right? Muraqaba. Okay, and this is basically our ihsan. Right? The, the, the third pillar of Islam, of this religion, is ihsan. This tree, they form our fardu ayn. Right? So it's not even a choice. <laughs> right? Some people think, oh, you know, some people, they, 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 they go into this, this, uh, this dimension and they go into all this, you know, like high level stuff and whatsoever. Subhanallah, uh, subhanallah. Right? Every Muslim needs to understand this thing. And every Muslim needs to take this path. You must take the path to go from here to there. Right? And for me, I'm speaking it in theory. Because like still here, still just even somewhat, somewhat there. Right? Try, trying to even understand this reality. Right? But everybody, throughout your life, what Mazali mentions, throughout your life, you are on this, you need to take this path. Right? That is why it's called suluk. Right? Suluk means, you know, salaka tariq. Right, suluk means you go, you take the path, right, and you try to get close to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Imam Ghazali says in Minhaj al Abidin, and I believe that al Abidin he says that people don't get it; right, they just don't get it. Right, they have their iman, six pillars; they have their Islam, five pillars, and they stay, they stay on this level. So it's not even there. They stay there for, for forty years of their lives, and they don't, they don't, their, their Islam and their iman. It does not push them forward to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like every moment in their life, they're not getting closer and closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my teacher, my teacher uh, Zainab, she would say that, you know, when you learn the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are levels to learning His names. When you learn the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is the first level of understanding these names being in the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then... You would, uh, and then you, in understanding the names of, 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 of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you go on to the next level, right, whereby you try right, to have, a, you know, even an element of these names right, reflect onto yourselves. Right? So, for example, the name Allah is the most forgiving, right, the most, the perfectly, absolutely forgiving, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, we understand this of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And we, we, we walk with it also right? Because we ask Allah for His forgiveness right? But they, it should not end there right? As believers right, there, is this, there is this taking upon right, Of the attributes By its name only Because of course The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Is nothing like how we are We are never the same as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is never the same as His creation Subhanahu wa ta'ala right? But what it means that What we understand from the name right? We take it upon And place it into ourselves Right, so we become uh, forgiving, we become merciful, right, we become gentle, right, we become just. These are all of the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In His own right, only He knows what He means. Right, but we understand something of it right, that we can take a point into our character. And that is how a person moves slowly from here right, to going... Uh, to go to, to, to moving there right, as they take upon uh, uh, what they understand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, this entire situation, I hope you are following me. Eh? Right? This entire situation, I think it's only two rukun. <laughs> and, and, but it's, subhanallah, it's two rukuns that are basically the beginning of the path and, uh, uh, and the, the goal right, of the path. That you want to have this muraqah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you are able, wherever you go, and you're able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in there. And I've met people and been with people who are like that. And they are, um, they are amazing. Wherever they go, is they, they only see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they, when they speak, they just tell you more and more and more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like random things. 
Uh, so even like you know uh, things like like same teacher lah, so Zainab, right? So she she's the one person that if I want to really uh, if I need help lah, mm. she always need help, right? With with ihsan and trying to get somewhere, right? She's the one person who can really explain things to you. She can really explain it. Right? Last time when I went to Tarim, she was saying that uh, in in the class that we were conducting, she was saying that you know understand that this uh, Sharia is a catalog. I understand it's a catalog meaning in 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 uh, in, in Arabic it says catalog, uh, right? But what she means is a manual. Right? Uh, it, means, it means she said that understand the Sharia is a manual. Your iman, your Islam, these are manuals. And these manuals right, is to teach you how to work the human being, right, to achieve or to do something that is higher and greater. Right? So it's a manual you have to follow. Right, that your Sharia, right, Islam and Iman, you have to follow. Of course, the Iman itself is uh, essential. Right? You can't even begin uh, if your Iman is not there. Right? So that, that, is the, uh, that day I was giving the uh, parable, my, it's my grandfather's parable, right, whereby my mother was telling me, la, right, she found him writing all these notes in his uh, old uh, books. My grandfather passed away, I think about f- more than 40 years ago. Right? So a long time ago. Right? But basically, he used to, to study all this uh, uh, things right, about Ihsan and he used to go deep uh, into Suluk and to understand this and he wrote something about um, the boat right, and the, uh, the sea right, and on Friday I shared it with the, uh, with the Tafsir group remember not the, the analogy I really like the analogy it's such, a, it's such an amazing analogy I saw it to share for those who were not there and, um, is that he, he writes that the, the sea right, is like the sea is okay, this dunya is like a sea Right, this dunya is a sea, it's an ocean. So we must get across this ocean to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is our goal. Right? To get across, you can't swim. You will drown. Right? Because it's an ocean. So what do you need? You need a boat. Right? This boat is likened to your aqidah, to your rukun iman. Right? So this boat is, the, is your belief system. Because you must have a belief system to even get started. You can't get started if there's no correct belief system. And this belief system, how you will brave right, the storms of the, of the dunya, right, it depends on how strong your belief system is. So people, you know, they, they work hard on their, on their uh, worship, which is correct, you work hard on their worship, but if they, have a, if they have a weak belief system, they cannot survive this world. You must have very strong, uh, at the core, your aqidah has to be very strong right, because of all of the issues that will come with the ocean. Right, the ocean has a lot of issues to pull you left and right. So, so that is the Akidah. Eh? So the building of this, uh, this, this boat. And as the boat goes along, the boat gets chipped off here and there. Right? The boat gets cracks. Gets, your Akidah gets affected by the musibah that happens to you in your life. Right? By calamities that happen to you in your life, some people, their Akidah gets stronger. Right? Some people, their Akidah gets weakened. Right, so, so as they go along, they need to check their boat at all times to ensure the boat is strong. This boat, right, while it can, it, can, it can float on the ocean by itself, right, it requires a boatsman to bring the boat across. Right, if there's no man in the boat, there's no physical being in the boat, how is the boat going to go across? Okay, this boatsman is your physical sharia, your prayer, your fasting, your zakat, uh, your, the physical part of Islam. And that's what we have, we have learned there. Eh? That is essential. Right? He has to be there. He has to be strong because he's going to uh, row the boat all the way to the other side. Right? If he is weak, right? if pray on off, right? uh, fasting or so, not, 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 so, not, so, <laughs> not so good at it, right? sedekah, your charity or so, you know, up and down. Right? This, this man, right? he needs to be strong. He needs to strengthen the man. And of course, that's why there is a reality of doing more ibadah. When you do more ibadah, right, inshallah, you can uh, move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala faster right, by doing more ibadah. But then again, the man, he can push the boat by himself. He needs oars. It's an amazing energy. <laughs> he needs oars. Right? And this oars would steer the boat. Right? Uh, these oars, two of them, right, they are uh, the rukun ihsan. This is, their, this is the, 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 the suluk. Right, to find the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the man with the oars, he's just trying to get his boat to, to, to a direction, he gets lost. Right, he needs to know the inner dimensions of Islam. This is what Ihsan is about. 
Uh, it is not enough to just have an outer manifestation of Islam. And that is where, you know, a lot of what, of, of, you know, of a lot of our, our youth, and even our own people, right, they go astray, right, or they easily leave Islam. Right, it's because of the outer uh, manifestation being emphasized without the inner uh, reality. So it becomes an empty shell. And empty, it just becomes like, you know, I have to pray because I have to pray. You know, I have to fast to cover up. Right? It's just I have to, I have to, I have to. Without an inner, an inner journeying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these things. Right? So the awes are there. So that's why they say that, you see, if you have no, you have no aqidah, right? your aqidah is wrong, you know, it is, it is it's spoiled, it's broken, then you never have to talk about sharia and, and about suluk yet. Right? Because aqidah is, is foundational. It has to be correct. Right? Someone can have good character and someone can be doing all you know, uh, the acts of worship, but if the aqidah is spoiled, something is wrong with the aqidah, right? they cannot travel. They can't. Right? So you see how the energy goes. Eh? So someone with, with correct aqidah, right? if like, they really fail in their sharia and in their uh, suluk, right? in, their, in their akhlaq, that means they have no men and they have no oars. <laughs> right? Then what happens to this person? The boat is just, you know, sitting on the ocean and it can be easily pushed to the side by the waves of the dunya. It can get lost. But we ask the question, is it possible for the boat to be saved? The answer is, if Allah has mercy on the boat, the boat can be saved. If Allah has mercy, Allah brings it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like eventually He can. Right? But high, there, there's a very high chance of the boat going lost. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wants to, so He will have mercy on the boat and He brings the boat. Right, so, so that's why you see all three have to come together right, in their way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, and I mentioned at the beginning of this, of this series about the fourth one, which is the knowledge of the hour. And the, uh, because the, 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 the hadith Jibril goes into a fourth question. Right, whereby Jibril asks, tell me about the hour. And Rasulullah says that the one who is asking is no more than the one who is being asked. And then he says, tell me about its signs. And then uh, he says, he said the two signs about the slave girl who gives birth to her master and the, uh, the destitute, barefoot, ha- barely dressed Bedouin or shepherd uh, build, competing to build higher and higher buildings. Right? And this, the ulama say, following the pattern of the hadith, these two things are rukun. Right? They are actually pillars and they are indications. And in fact, Habib Abu Bakr al says, it's like a riddle. Right? He, gives it, he gives it in riddle form. Right, so you have, to, you have to figure it out. Right, so it's not something that is just one meaning, right, but it's a deeper meaning. Even the ihsan part, right, it is like a riddle. Right, it is a statement, right, but you have to go deeper into what Rasulullah is speaking about. Okay, now we are on ihsan, as yes, you understand. So this ihsan right, is the inner dimension of the human being. Right, Imam Ghazali says, in his uh, Mishnah Abidin, Imam Ghazali says that all these acts of worship that's in our religion, our fasting, our praying, our zakat, all of it is to push us to take on an inward journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of it. So he says that if a person, if a Muslim, from a time he was 12 years old to the time he is 50 years old, if his prayer has been the same prayer the entire time, then he has not gotten the points of prayer. He's praying, yeah, he's praying. Right? But he's not gotten, you know, what is the prayer for? What's the point of the prayer? Right? So there is the outer manifestation, right? but there is this inward that has been missed. And that is the ihsan. Right? That to worship Allah as if you see him, and if you don't see him, then know that he sees you. Right? So, Masayna Muhammad. Right? So, it, uh, let me see the, the, the points here. All right. So in this, so in this rukun, so we begin with where we are at. Okay, some of you are here, lah. Right, so then just bear with me because I'm still here. <laughs> right, so we begin with where we are at, right? Um, and we and we see that for this rukun, right? So here it says rukun al al muraqaba, and it is an ta'abudullah ka an nakatarahu, and then you have rukun of taqwa that for illam takun tarahu fa innahu yarak. Right, and if you don't see him, then know that he sees you. Right, and in a hadith that is uh, famous, so here, here uh, he actually goes through the, the hadith Jibril right, from start to end. Right, and the, this part, this last part came after Islam and Iman. And in fact, when you look at hadith Jibril, 
this is, is very telling, Hadith Jibril. Because the first question, even though you say that for us our basis is, is Iman, but the first question Jibril asked was, tell me about Islam. Right? And then he goes, tell me about Iman. You see that? Right? The way he, he arranges his question. Then tell me about Ihsan. Then tell me about the hour. Right? And the hour we say is the monster in the sea. Right? That is the hour. Eh? Because it, our parabell, right? so while you have a strong boat, strong boatsman, strong oars, you still need to know who are the monsters in the sea, where they are and how to fight them. If you don't know all about the monsters, right, you can be easily taken, up, taken, taken over by the monsters, even if you are strong, because you don't know the enemy. Right? So to know the enemy is essential and Habib says core to our religion, to know the enemy. And that is why maybe in the past, people didn't know the enemy uh, very well, right? or they know the, the size of the hour very well, because their monsters are all small monsters. <laughs> right? The monster is a baby monster. Right? <laughs> In our time, they are big giant monsters, and they have grown. <laughs> right? They have grown, and they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are eating up people, and destroying people. That's why in our time, you see people who grow up in, on very, very strongly on the religion. They have their iman. Right? They were taught their ihsan. And somewhere along the way, in our zubillah, they go astray. Right? They, get, they, get, they get sucked in. By the monsters. And the monsters go into their minds right, and manipulate their thoughts. Right, change, you know, uh, uh, inject ideas, very dangerous ideas into their minds. And they go all the way astray because they don't know that they are being attacked by the monsters. They can't identify the monster. Right, the monster is camouflaged <laughs> right, in the ocean. You can't see it. Right, so, but Rasulullah SAW, in many hadiths, he tells us where the monsters are. He points, 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 points. And then he says, beware, beware, beware. I understand them, all these things. And then he also gives us the, uh, the solution. Right? When you see it, what to do? When you see it, what to do? Right? Subhanallah. That's why you know, Habib uh, Abu Bakr, right, he puts in this thing as a fourth rukun because of the, of the hadith. The hadith goes all four in one go. Right? And, it's, and because of our time, this, fourth, uh, this monster is so uh, uh, vicious. In our time, it becomes wajib on us right, to study it. And so when someone asks him the question of, is this fardu ain? To learn about the monsters. Is it fardu ain? About, about the, the, the signs of the end of time, the monsters. Right? The signs of the end of time. Is it fardu ain? He says, it is the fard of the place and the time. So depending on your zaman, depending on your makan, right, on your zaman, on your, on your place, right, it can become fard. Right. And in our place, in our time, it is compulsory. <laughs> right. Because the monsters are everywhere around us. To, even to teach our young ones. Because they will be facing even stronger monsters. Right. With, with, the, with the passage of time, with every generation, the monsters get stronger and stronger towards the end of time. Right. Until it becomes the Dajjal and, and so on. Lah. Right. Until the end of time. You go back to our Ihsan. So we begin with this... Uh, uh, we begin with this uh, rukun, right? So rukun of taqwa. Fa ilam takun tarahu, fa inna hu yaraka. Right? He, if you, if you can't see him, then for then know for surely that he sees you. So the first thing is about taqwa. Right? Taqwa is the first step right, on the your path to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So this rukun. There are principles, and these principles are to be applied on every aspect of Islam. Every aspect. So from your prayer to your fasting to your zakat, as well as your interactions with those who are around you, right, as well as your own feelings in your heart. Right? Every aspect of Islam and the aspects of human beings, right, all of it, this rukun, this first one, is to be applied. And that is how you begin on your path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You become, you become beings that are God-focused. Like God, God-conscious beings or God-focused beings. And this is what brings, brings Muslims to a very high level of character. And that is what our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about. And he, was, he was someone whereby he said, I came only to perfect noble character. Right, subhanallah. And if those of you have been coming for Surah Luqman's uh, tafsir, you see uh, Sayyidina Luqman, what he focuses his son on. Right, he focuses him on first, on character. Right, on how to purify your inward. He speaks about prayer and fasting, yes. But these are vehicles. Right, that need, you need to understand right, where are you headed to. 
I don't just stay you know, uh, in, in, in one place and not move. So for example, I'm going to use examples to illustrate the different steps right, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so the first one, okay, the, 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 the scholars that they begin, right, the first one right, is to stay away right, from what would ruin your ex or, or, or what would ruin your you see, eh? what would ruin your acts of obedience to bring you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, okay, you're on a path. Right? You want to go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Your vehicle, right? okay, of course your boat is your aqidah right, to be there. Right? And then your, your person right, is your sharia. Right? The, word, the, what you should, what, the first way to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to not allow things to destroy your vehicle. Okay? Don't allow things to destroy your vehicle. These things that destroy your vehicles, they are sins. So the first, the, all the books, they will say the first, the first step on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the elimination of sins in your life. Of course, you can't remove sins entirely. Right? Sins, you know, we're all human beings, you all sin. Right? But that's the first step to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? that you identify what is haram right? and you stay as far away as you can from it. Right? The ulama say it is more virtuous for a person to minimize his sins, right, then, uh, then to maximize his, uh, his recommended deeds and his sunnah, sunnah deeds. It's more virtuous. Both are virtuous. Right? Both are correct, both are virtuous. Right? To do a lot of sunnah, to do a lot of ibadah and whatsoever, right? but not at the expense of committing all these sins. Right? So if someone you know, does all this ex- ex- obedience and then goes around backbiting, slandering, cheating, you know, doing, uh, having hatred for other people, having uh, hasad, you know, being, be having jealousies, right? all these sins that they are doing, or, you know, other sins, like uh, physical sins, right? whereby you, you, you harm other people and whatsoever, right? then this person, right, there is no goodness in this person. And that is from the hadith of Rasulullah wasallam, whereby they came to him and they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, right, that woman, uh, she is, you know, a qawwama sawwama, right? she is a woman who stands the night to pray and she fasts the day. But she hurts her neighbor with her tongue. And the Rasulullah says, La khayran fiha, there is no goodness in her. That's the statement. Eh? It's a very scary statement. Eh? There's no goodness in her here of nar. Right? She's in the fire. And if that statement comes out of the, of the mouth, the blessed mouth of Rasulullah, wasalam, it's a true statement. Right? She is in the fire. This, you know, the moment he says something, that's it. Right? It, it, it's, that's it. But he only says things after he knows from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this person will never change. Right? Only after he knows. Right? He, ne- or some, he never curses. Right? But he only will say something if Allah has revealed to him that so and so, no matter how you advise them, no matter how you uh, try to influence them, they will never change. Only the Prophet has that. Lah. Only he has that. And so in the seerah, if you go through the seerah, you will see there are instances Whereby he says, Allahumma and alayka bi. Right? He says, Oh Allah, on you, so and so, so and so, so and so, of these believers. And all of these people, one by one, they will die. Right? And it's, it's something that, that he doesn't do it because of his you know, uh, hatred or any form of negative uh, uh, characteristics about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? But he does it out of mercy because these people, they will never change. Uh, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed him they will never change and their staying around in this world is harming other people. Uh, they, are, they are vicious uh, and they hurt other people. Uh, so you see, this is all, all under, if you, look, if you study properly under the, 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 the seerah uh, about Rasulullah wa sallam, you will see all of these things. I hope I'm not, I'm not confusing anybody. <laughs> uh, but if you, if you are still having any doubts, after class, you just uh, come up to me and ask me the questions. Uh, but mashallah, Rasulullah he says about this woman, there is no goodness in her. She prays the night, she fasts the day. Not to say that we should not pray the night and fast the day. Right? You should pray the night and you should fast the day. Right? But this should be correcting your character. Right? If you're doing all these things and your character is still foul, right? it's still vicious, and you're not doing anything to, to right it right? or to cleanse it, right? then what, what has happened to you is that you are a hypocrite. Uh, but your ibadah is not cleansing your inward. Uh, the the outward sharia should be cleansing the inward self of a person. 
get that so in our in your path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ulama say the first thing that you need to focus on is throwing out the filth or whatever's the filth right you know it, of course in in trying to throw it out you occupy yourself with what is pure right so for example if someone um Masayna Muhammad I right, finds it whenever I go to this relative's house f- confirm there will be bad bad thing going on I know that there's always and for us I'm I'm always going to going to use this as, as an example because for most of us this is where the sin enters from the tongue as so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you know if you can guarantee for me what's between your jaws and what's between your legs I will guarantee for you paradise right so meaning your, your tongue and your and your private parts and the ulama say the tongue is more difficult <laughs> right to control this tongue especially when you upset right or with someone or when someone's upset with someone else and this this all will we pull in good or bad character and islam requires that a person control right and it's is compulsory eh? it's wajib eh? it's, it's to be a good person in islam is wajib right it's not a choice to be nice is wajib to be polite is wajib it's compulsory for you to be polite to be nice uh, it's haram to be rude on the other hand i don't think that is something that by the side you do you know if you can you do it if you can't you don't do it no it is compulsory right? as compulsory as everything else in, in, in islam right so while you put on your hijab it's compulsory to cover your aurat right it's also compulsory for you to address people in good speech with, with good manners it's compulsory for you not to be harsh Right? And, and wicked onto people, <laughs> wicked. <laughs> you want to be evil onto people. Right? You can't be, you can't be that. That is not the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at all. At all, that is not his way. Right? So, so when when we think about this, how come Muslims were so pro eh, at all the physical laws of Islam, and we know oh haram, halal, haram, halal, and it's important. It is important. Right? But when it comes to character, right? We will say to someone, eh, hey, being rude is haram, eh. <laughs> you know, like, have you ever had someone say to you, "Being rude is haram"? It is haram. It is. It is haram as you eating, you know, uh, a pork or something. Haram, right? To actually be rude. <coughs> All this bad character is not not permissible in Islam, right? So as we move towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the first step is to throw out the filth, right? And when, and the filth will keep will keep coming back in. That is why you have tawbah is still far. Right, every day, at least a hundred times, do your istighfar. Rasulullah SAW says in the hadith that I do my istighfar and I turn to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala seventy times a day. In another riwayat, a hundred times a day. Right, and it's not that Rasulullah SAW, like he has. You say he has no sin, what? Right, and he, but he has, he has no sin, of course. Rasulullah SAW, he has no sin. Right, but he is an example to his ummah, and he tells people. Right, he himself. He turns to Allah. He tawbah to Allah seventy times a day, and the scholar, and, and, and the Sahaba will say, "We will sit with him, and we will count. He will be talking to us, teaching to, in teaching us, Allahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we will count in between his breaths. This is still far, in between his breaths. Subhanallah. I mean, Subhanallah. Right? And and this kind of uh, approach to Allah <coughs> Subhanahu Wa Taala is the strongest way uh, by which a person humbles herself. To Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because in in moving towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, in increasing in acts of goodness, or in good deeds, there is a very strong danger of arrogance. Right, and arrogance itself is a sin. <laughs> right, there's a very strong danger that someone might look down on other people, judge other people, be arrogant. Right? So scholars always go on the side of focus on your own fa- failings, right, your own sins. Focus on this. You want to get to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Mughazari says, "Throw off the burden. You can't soar for as long as you are burdened, and your burden is what sins, right? Sins, and also this Mughazari says one of the very strong burdens is your your is you chaining yourself to the to the earth, to the ground, means to the world. You're chaining yourself to all these things of this world. You can't go to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that's why it's called suluk." Right, so it's a way to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That is ihsan. Right, so the first part is throwing out sins. The first step of taqwa, right, to remove sins, to identify what you are doing in your life that is not uh, pleasing to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. To weep in the night to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. To, to desperately ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to to help you be better right, as a Muslim, 
as, as, a, as a human being also, in your character, to be desperate about asking this. One of the Habibs, he said that, you know, many people will come to me and ask me for dua, you know, because they know that he has, he has you know, dua mustajab. So many people will come to him and ask him for dua, and they will ask about their business, about their family, they want children, they want this, they want that. And he says, but nobody asks me to dua for them to have a clean heart. No one asks about that. Everyone's so concerned about all that, that dunya. And they ask, you know, you see, Habib, Habib, dua for me, I get chan. Habib, dua for me, I get my business will, 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 will flourish. Dua for me, I enter into this school. Dua for me, you know, like, like you, know, you, you have all these things. They say, I can dua for all these things. He says, no problem. But it's just, the what is important. <laughs> like, what about dua for me about my heart? And my heart is diseased. Dua for me. Dua for me that I act on my knowledge. Dua for me that I am, you know, uh, that, that I love uh, uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't drag my feet. Dua for me. All these things <laughs> need, need dua right? from those people of, uh, of Musajab dua. And for us to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely to take us by the hand and to teach us what we are to experience in our prayers. We're going to focus on our prayers. Like what, are we, what does He want us to experience? And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before every prayer, right, let me, you know, let this prayer be better than the last one. We ask Allah because that is one of the signs in which your prayers are accepted. If your prayers day in and day out is going to be the same level, right, it's like an exam. Eh? When you pass the exam, then you can go to the next stage. Right? If you don't pass the exam, you will stay at the same stage. Right? So if you find your prayer at the same place the entire time, it's because that paper belum pass. Right? The paper, you have not passed that paper. Right? You need to pass that paper to go to the next paper and the next paper. Right? So one of the very clear indications of any accepted deed is that there is change after the deed. So that's why we always hear Hajj and Umrah. Right? One of the signs of a Hajj and Umrah that is accepted is that you come back a changed person. Right? Because Hajj and Umrah is very strong, the change. Inshallah, there is a strong change. And you don't go for Hajj or Umrah and come back the same person. Right, there has to be changes in you, improvements in you. Uh, Ramadan, right, the sign that Ramadan is accepted is that after Ramadan, there is change in you. And you, only, you be your own judge. You be your own judge. Is there change? Is your Ramadan accepted? Right, in fact, the scholars, they, 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 they uh, extend this to all acts of obedience. Any act of obedience, after it, there has to be a movement, one step. Towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Don't be stagnant Where you are at This is our rukun ihsan <laughs> So mashallah It is part of our fardu ain. It's part of It's compulsory knowledge For us to study uh, In this book itself It will have all three right? in, in the glorious treasure It has all three As with most uh, traditional books Most traditional books Will have all three Dimensions of Islam If you have studied Biyadul Hidayah Beginning of Guidance It has all three Right, if you studied this one, it has all three. If you studied uh, Risada Jeremiah, it has all three. Right, and most of the books in Islam has all three dimensions of Islam because of what is compulsory. Right, so they'll go from Iman, then they'll go into... A, the, 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 the majority of the book is fiqh, eh? if you're know, wondering. This entire part is all fiqh. It's fiqh. <laughs> from start to end, it's fiqh. And the last part, that is suluk. Right, Habib actually points us to how do you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right, but each book, they focus on different things when it comes to suluk. Right, so for here, for this book, he focuses on uh, certain things about Rasulullah Wasallam, right, And he also focuses on some du'as that you can do, simple things for people to take steps towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, if you have studied uh, the beginning of guidance, right, at the end of it, Imam Ghazali goes into several things. The rights of people, the diseases of the heart. And he goes into a few things at the end of Bilal Hidayah as part of your, of your uh, wayfaring, your suluk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so inshallah, uh, uh, next week I will just mention a bit about this. But this entire topic is very, you know, it, it is vast. Right? And the scholars will talk about it over and over again because everyone is struggling on this. But the whole thing is that you must be struggling. I don't be content where you are at. I, nobody can think that I'm okay. I don't think that. I think that I need to, to keep moving I, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will stop there for today, inshallah. Asalallah. Any questions? Mashallah.
Uh, that one is Imam Ghazali's words. <laughs> so Imam Ghazali is the one who said that if you don't see, if you don't reach Allah here, he says, then you will not reach him in the hereafter. <laughs> right, so uh, that one is Imam Ghazali. <laughs> right, so I mean, for me, subhanAllah, <laughs> I hope Allah has mercy on us. That even if you don't, if you don't even if you don't reach him here, right, you know, let, by his mercy, he will reach us. <laughs> InshaAllah. Sallallahu <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wal asr Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik Sallallahu alaihi wasallam Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahirabbil alamin